Well, thank you, Evian, for uh, organizing this session. And what I'd like to do uh, in the next few minutes is to talk about one um, uh, gene where we've been uh, examining uh, SNPs that has uh, been a, an area of interest of our group and, uh, and other groups, uh, namely the um, ABCB1 or the uh, MDR1, which encodes for the P-glycoprotein uh, that controls uh, efflux of specific antidepressants from brain. Let me see. Okay. Uh, and we're going to try to kind of talk about the interaction here of cognitive measures following a meets talk uh, and uh, a, uh, ABCB1 measures. Now, the p glycoprotein pump is an efflux pump. So it pumps drugs out of brain. It's been a, a kind of an area of great interest in chemotherapy because of the extrusion of the uh, oncology uh, treatment from the cell may prevent its uh, effectively killing off the tumor cells. Um, and some people have thought that for many of the antidepressants that we have, uh, the SSRIs, SNRIs, many of them are substrates for this uh, pump, and that, in fact, there may be issues with some patients, in fact, uh, having dramatic efflux of, of, of drug outside of, of brain, uh, from the brains. And this is just a schematic uh, <clears throat> showing you the blood-brain barrier. Uh, showing you tight junctions here with the P glycoprotein, in fact, extruding a drug from the brain uh, out um, into the uh, circula circula circulation bed. Now, there have been a few reports. Originally, this came out of the Max Planck, particularly uh, in Munich, where they reported that two or three SNPs, intronic SNPs, uh, for the uh, MDR1 uh, gene uh, seemed to be associated with more, more rapid response. And that was in a study of hospitalized depressives at the uh, at Max Planck Institute, uh, a psychiatric institute. We uh, sh did a replication of this uh, looking at a, a, a two of the SNPs in a geriatric depression study where we compared paroxetine here, which is a substrate, that's Paxil, was the original uh, Bran uh, versus mirtazapine, which is a non-substrate uh, agent uh, with a different mechanism of action. And as you can see here, for two of these SNPs, that, um, one of which was reported by the Max Planck group, you see a very dramatic uh, decrease in symptoms um, over time uh, in the patients who are minor allele carriers compared to uh, the uh, major homozygotes. And we saw this also for a 223-5040 uh, SNP as well. Uh, you don't see it for the non-substrate uh, agent. This, um, unfortunately, we looked in our hands at about 15 SNPs. And when you, when you in fact, correct for the other SNPs, uh, even in this study, which is about 250 patients, you lose, in fact, significance. Although it does make by itself. And it was a similar finding in the Max Planck uh, study where they looked at 400 inpatients. So there seems to be something there, but the multiple comparisons it, it, uh, does not allow it to withstand uh, that correction. Um, in the uh, MDR1 uh, analysis for the iSpot study, we've been looking at 10 SNPs. Um, a couple of them we, uh, were the ones that we reported on before, uh, the 223, uh, 203, for example. Uh, and one in particular turned out to be quite significant. That is this 1024583, a which is a SNP in the promoter region. So most of these other SNPs are intronic. There are a couple that are exonic, but most of that, but this one is in the promoter region. Um, here are the LD maps. Here's your 1025454A3. Uh, you can see it is not an LD with any of the other uh, SNPs. So it uh, is an interesting uh, SNP. And when we looked at all the SNPs, we had um, all the 10 SNPs, we had some positive findings, but they, did again, did not withstand correction for the multiple comparisons. Um, we then started to wonder, is there another issue here uh, that uh, is important and one that can be addressed by the iSpot data? And you heard from Evian a little bit about this, and namely that, in fact, uh, this is a large group of depressors. Uh, in a heterogeneous disorder, and a heterogeneous uh, in both genetics as well as probably presentation. And can we, in fact, focus this down? And what we did then was to take the patients and, in fact, to 
uh, to cluster them as either impaired uh, based on the cognitive testing. So these are the patients that had all the complete testing and they had abnormalities, uh, significant abnormalities against the control group of a half a standard deviation or more uh, in performance on all the measures. Uh, and we could have a, a, an impaired group and a, a non-impaired group. And then we ask the question, if in fact looking at uh, dividing these, the overall sample into an impaired and a non-impaired group, do we in fact see a signal for any of the SNPs um, in, in prediction of response? Um, this shows you the age distribution for those who are impaired versus those who are not. The age distribution for the impaired um, uh, uh, is uh, um, averages about uh, 55. For the unimpaired, the mean is about 45. But you can see that there's a larger group of younger depressives in the uh, cognitively unimpaired. Now, these are not markedly impaired folks. These are based on really a uh, comparison to the normal group of 336 subjects. And these patients, none of them, in fact, meet criteria for mild cognitive impairment or any other uh, cognitive uh, disorder. So this is what you find, in fact, when you look at the SNP, which overall doesn't withstand any correction. But when you look at the interaction with cognition, in fact, uh, it does withstand uh, correction for the other SNPs. And what you find here is that the minor carriers for the uh, SNP in the promoter region, uh, in fact, have very high response rates. Uh, this is response on the y-axis. If you look at the normal subjects, there's no difference uh, in, in response based on genotyping for this promoter uh, SNP. But the um, uh, minor allele carriers, in fact, perform very much like the uh, normal group. And so what we're seeing here, then, is really an interaction uh, of a, two measures uh, that, in fact, couldn't be a much better way uh, for us to achieve sensitivity for these tests by, in fact, defining the subgroups are better or defining what may be, in fact, the, uh, the phenotype of depression that uh, may be uh, more amenable to either biological treatments or more amenable to biological predictor predictors. Now, in side effects, uh, we found the opposite. So minor allele carriers, in fact, had less side effects than did the major homozygotes in the repair group. And this was certainly significantly less than individual, the, um, uh, the normal uh, cognitive group. And what that is suggesting, and we've seen this uh, in, in a recent study where we also had an, in another uh, cohort of subjects that the SNPs that seem to predict very robust responses seem to also predict fewer side effects, that the patients, in fact, often have somewhat of a lower dose because they achieve response more rapidly. Now, when we looked at, in fact, um, by drug, you start to see that there may be, in fact, differences. All three of these drugs have been thought to be substrates, certainly venlafaxin, and, sertal and sertraline uh, have been, I think, pretty well documented to be substrates. Citalopram has. s citalopram has been a little bit in question. But what you see here is a very nice, in fact, uh, uh, prediction of uh, the side effects, particularly in the venlafaxine group with the minor carriers, in fact, having lower, and s citalopram in fact, behaving differently. So this, in, in a way, parallels some of Amit's finding that s citalopram and venlafaxin may uh, behave differently in terms of prediction. So um, just to go over this again, when we, uh, uh, when we try to correct, when we correct for multiple comparisons in the overall group for this, uh, for this uh, gene, looking at the alleles, we did not see any prediction for any of the SNPs. We uh, didn't see it either in the cohort uh, for Caucasians versus minorities. Uh, but we do see, in fact, dramatic differences when we look at the cognitively impaired or the poor cognitively performing individuals compared to the uh, normal cognitive group with, in fact, the SNP predicting, uh, uh, the minor carriers for the promoter SNP predicting better response overall uh, and fewer side effects, uh, particularly with venlafaxine. We are looking at other uh, genes. We're pro in the process of now looking at glutamatergic genes because we've done an extensive analysis of uh, uh, 300 SNPs, uh, and we hope to have some data for you uh, maybe next year when, uh, at the next conference. So thank you very, very much.